okay so now let us discuss about the frequency of induced gmf in ac machine or pola polarity and frequency of induced gmf in ac machine okay for that i am considering a simple single phase generator and i am using a ac type generator so you can use a simple ac generator to understand the frequency of induced gmf in synchronous machine now please observe let us suppose we have consider an ac generator turning at a speed of 10 ohm okay let us suppose we have an ac generator turning at a speed of better to say turning at a speed of 1 rotation per second okay so consider an ac generator turning at a speed of 1 rotation per second as shown in figure below i am trying to show you the AC generator here, which is turning at a speed of the rotor is turning at a speed of n, a one rotation per second. So the generated voltage can be expressed as a function of a rotation. Now please see. this ac gen i am considering this ac generator rotor is turning at a speed of 1 rotation per second so the generated voltage can be expressed as a function of rotation now please observe here we have say stator conductors and stator is stationary this is being fixed by using this okay so stator can't rotate and we have rotor rotor is provided with a say a dc and because of which there will be a pole formation on to the rotor let us suppose the current flowing on to the rotor i have provided a dc current on to the rotor all these side this side will carrying current outward and this side will carrying current inward so because of the dc current this portion is going to act as a north by the simple right hand grip rule you can find that this to be act as a north and this portion is acting as a south because of the dc current this north and south polarity is being fixed okay now if i am rotating this rotor at a speed of nr let us suppose for a moment that this rotor is producing a sinusoidal field so when i am saying sinusoidal field it means this let us suppose this rotor is producing a sinusoidal field and this will be your rotor field mmf okay and the rotor is rotated by some external means say rotor is rotated by the prime mover in anti clockwise at a speed of 1 rotation per second motion and you can say because of the motion of the rotor and this is being acting as a permanent magnet why i am saying being acting as a permanent magnet because the dc is being supplied so the polarity of this magnet is fixed but since the rotor is rotating so the field will is be rotating if if i am if i have this to be the rotor and this terminal acting as a north and this terminal acting as a south if i rotate this rotor then definitely the magnet is moving so the magnetic field is moving so you can experience here that magnetic field is moving in this fashion is it okay 
Now please observe, for this magnetic field, the polarity across this, the polarity of this induced DMF will be maximum, the polarity, the induced DMF across conductor A will be maximum when A is under the influence of north or under the influence of south directly. If you observe this field is also called as direct axis, this axis is also called as direct axis. Some people says that the south is representing negative direct axis, that is just a direct axis, both the field axis are the direct axis, is it okay? So this is your direct axis and 90 degree electrical to the direct axis is called as magnetic neutral axis, definitely if this will be your direct axis then this will be your magnetic neutral axis because the flux at this point is seems to be 0. Is it okay? And if you observe from the south side, then south side the field is in the opposite direction. So you can say at this particular point that is 90 degree from the direct axis is your magnetic neutral axis also sometimes called as quadrature axis. Is it okay? So when the field is maximum, you can say sir previously the field is here and as the field is moving in this way, when field is when field is positioning in this particular fashion, then the flux linking with A is such that induced DMF in A will going to be maximum, is it okay? And when A is under the influence of magnetic neutral axis, when A is under the influence of magnetic neutral axis, then there will be no induced DMF in conductor A. Now please observe the induced DMF in conductor A and A dash. If I am rotating this rotor in a clockwise direction, if I am rotating this rotor in a clockwise direction, say in this fashion, then the induced GMF will be maximum for this particular point. Okay? So induced GMF in A and A dash is maximum. Now I am representing the coil A and A dash. Please observe. This is will be your coil A and A dash. This portion is said to be the conductor A of the coil and this portion is said to be the conductor A dash of the coil. The entire thickness wire each and everything will be same but the induced DMF is only occurs across this conductor A. This induced DMF is not going to be occurring in this overhang, is it okay? So that is why this portion is said to be a conductor. Now, <coughs> this is under the influence of north. So, when the, when conductor A is under the influence of north, then induced DMF in conductor A is maximum and induced DMF in conductor A dash is maximum as they are just below the, just uh, below the north pole and just below the south pole. Now, I am assuming that the rotor is rotating in a clockwise, anti-clockwise direction. So, if the rotor is rotating in this way, so you can say sir the polarity of induced DMF can be found by the right hand palm rule. You can say receive the flux on this surface. If the field is rotating in anti-clockwise direction then stop the field and rotate the conductor in a clockwise direction. So the polarity of induced DMF you found that is outward and the polarity of induced DMF here you found that is inward. Is it okay? So you can say let us suppose that the polarity of induced DMF outward and that is equals to 10 volt. Outward means the polarity of induced DMF of this type, let it be 10 volts and the polarity of induced DMF of this type because equal magnitude of north and south. So you can say the polarity of induced DMF is this type. So the total polarity, the to total induced DMF observed across the coil is equals to 20 volts and the polarity of induced DMF as this to be positive and this to be negative. You can say this is at instantaneous polarity across the coil at this particular instant. So the instantaneous polarity observed across the coil at one instant when the conductor is just under the influence of north and conductor A dash is just under the influence of south. After 90 degree of rotation, now please observe. Since I have rotated the rotor at a speed of 1 rotation per second, so we may represent the induced DMF as a function of rotation. Now please observe the induced DMF as a function of rotation. Now please observe after 90 degree of rotation, after 90 degree of rotation, after 90 degree of rotation, the stator will remain in its position, in the previous position. 
as a stator is stationary so a and a dash will remain in the position but rotor reached at the new position so this north and south reached as the new position after 90 degree of rotation anti clockwise now presently a and a dash are along the magnetic neutral axis so now they are along the magnetic neutral axis so there will be no induced dmf while this is your direct axis so you can say sir there will be no induced dmf across coil a and a dash as they are at magnetic neutral axis so at magnetic neutral axis the induced dmf across the conductor is 0 volts okay it is decreasing as per sign function as the as this will start moving you can say the flux linking with the coil is re, uh, reducing and therefore d5 by dt is reducing induced dmf is reducing when 90 degree of rotation is being resulted uh, or you can say after 90 degree of rotation you found that a and a dash are at the magnetic neutral axis so there will be no induced emf no induced emf is it okay now come to the after 180 degree of rotation after 180 degree of rotation so after 180 degree of rotation now the rotor pole are in the position as this will become north and our one will become south the stator a is now under the influence of south and a stator conductor a dash is now under the influence of north so you can say the polarity of induced dmf across a and a dash changes as the you can observe since this is in the motion in this direction so you can say stop the field and rotate the conductor in the opposite direction so if you rotate the conductor in the opposite direction you found a dash will be dot and this will become cross so the polarity of induced dmf reverses you can say sir again the polarity of induced dmf is maximum at this particular instant you can say 10 volts but now the polarity of induced dmf is the magnitude of the voltage is same that is 10 volt when the conductors are under the influence of north and south directly you can say the polarity of induced dmf across a will become cross and the polarity of induced dmf across d uh, across a dash will become dot cross means this and dot means this so this will become negative and this will become positive 20 volts if you observe at 0 degree instant also we are getting 20 volts and at after 120 degree of rotation we are again getting 20 volts but now this is minus 20 volts because this terminal is negative and this terminal is positive however at 0 degree this terminal is positive and this terminal is negative is it okay so you can observe here how the field how the current in the conductor a and a dash is changing with respect to time because we are providing motion and if this if this motion is in one second one rotation in one second we may provide five rotation in one second we may provide 10 rotation in one one second so you can say sir this depends upon the speed the change in polarity depends upon the speed of the rotor is it okay now please observe <coughs> after 180 degree after 270 degree again if you observe after 270 degree there will be no induced dmf because again a and a dash will be at magnetic neutral axis after 270 degree of rotation after 270 degree of rotation now the field reaches to this position please observe this will be north and this will be south so stator a and a dash are again at magnetic neutral axis so there will be no induced dmf across a and a dash magnetic neutral axis that is also called as mn so there will be no induced emf this will be your direct axis no induced emf and if you observe after 360 degree of rotation after 360 degree of rotation then again you found that a is now becoming under the influence of north and a dash is under the influence of south so you can say sir now again a is under the influence of north and a dash is under the influence of south so this will again become dot and 
cross. So, the polarity of induced DMF is again being changed in A and A dash as well as the polarity of induced DMF at the terminals is changing. In A and A dash the magnitude of the again 10 volts, magnitude of the induced DMF is again 10 volts in each conductor magnitude across the coil will become 20 volts with this as positive and this as negative. So, you can observe that as the rotation as the position of the pole is changing the polarity of the induced DMF is changing. Now, please observe how the induced DMF is changing here. When rotor this position you found that this to be the induced DMF polarity maximum 10 volt and this to be the induced DMF polarity maximum 10 volts. As the rotor rotates, as the rotor rotates the induced DMF magnitude decreases and after 90 degree of rotation induced DMF will become 0. Beyond this, beyond this soon as A dash comes under the influence of north and A will come under the influence of south. So, the polarity of induced DMF reverses and as the further root on the further rotation you can say as the field under the influence of as the field linking A dash increases then the induced GMF is increasing in this fashion it will become maximum at 180 degree. So, you can say the polarity of induced GMF is changing in every half a cycle is it ok. Please observe you can say sir. The polarity of induced DMF in this AC machine can be represented in this format. Please see at 0 degree of rotation the induced DMF is 20 volts positive as the field is rotating induced DMF is decreasing and at 9 after 90 degree of rotation induced DMF will become 0. Then after 180 degree of rotation induced DMF will become negative 20 volts. Then after 270 degree of rotation again induced DMF is decreasing and becoming 0 at 270 degree and again induced DMF is increasing and becoming plus 20 volts at 360 degree of rotation. So, if you observe this will be in, in terms of rota uh, rotation. If I increase the speed of the rotation then the polarity of induced DMF the change in the polarity of induced DMF increases. It means the polarity of induced DMF depends upon the relative motion between field and the winding as the winding is stationary and field is moving. So, as you increase the relative motion the frequency of alternating current or you can say frequency of uh, frequency of induced DMF is increasing. Now, please observe presently we have taken a two pole machine. So, in one rotation you found that in a one rotation one complete cycle of induced DMF is being observed. Let us suppose if the pole is uh, if the machine is of two pole then what happens. If the machine is of two pole if the machine is of four pole then instead of two pole if the machine is of four pole it means the rotor windings are placed in such a way that if the machine is of four pole then north south north south. Now, what happens as the rotation of the rotor this north to south now this will become the magnetic neutral axis. Now, this will become the magnetic neutral axis between north and south and this will become the magnetic neutral axis. Magnetic neutral axis is always electrically 180, uh, 90 degree ok and the electrical angle between adjacent pole is always 180 degree. So, you can say if this is 180 degree then this is representing 90 degree electrical. Electrical degrees are different from the mechanical degrees I will prove it uh, in a later on lectures. Now, please observe you can say sir from this as the pole moves this A will come under the influence of magnetic neutral axis and therefore, induced DMF decreases. After 90 degree you can say after 45 degree of rotation induced DMF will become 0 and after 90 degree of rotation induced DMF will become negative maximum. 
after 135 degree of rotation induced DMF. Now, this will be under the influence of the A will be under the influence of this axis. So, you can say after 135 degree of rotation induced DMF will become again uh, you can say 0 and after 180 degree of rotation induced DMF will again become positive maximum. Is it okay? So, as this is rotating you can say sir if these are the poles then after 45 after 45 uh, after 45 degree of rotation this A is under the influence of magnetic neutral axis and after 90 degree of rotation A is under the influence of south. So, you can say sir this is the polarity of induced DMF for two pole machine. If this machine is of four pole then 45 degree we get 0 and 90 we get maximum then 180 we again we get 135 we again get 0 at 135 and again at 180 we get maximum. Then again, so if you observe this one you found that for a four pole machine for a four pole machine two induced GMF cycles is completing in one rotation two induced GMF cycle is completing in one rotation. Similarly, for a six pole machine you found that for a six pole machine you found 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 that three complete cycle of induced GMF and for eight pole machine four complete cycle of induced GMF in one rotation. So, you can say sir number of cycles of induced DMF in one rotation is equals to number of cycles of induced DMF in one rotation is equals to P by 2 for 2 pole 1 cycle for 4 pole 2 cycle for 6 pole 3 cycle for 8 pole 4 cycles. So, you can say for p poles p by 2 cycles number of cycles of induced DMF in one rotation number of rotations per second number of rotations per second number of rotations per second is n by 60. So, you can say sir number of cycles of induced DMF number of cycles of induced DMF in 1 second number of cycles of induced DMF in 1 second is equals to P n by 120. Instead of saying n I am saying this to be delta n where delta n is representing relative speed between field and winding. So, the number of cycles of induced DMF in one second you can say this is frequency of induced DMF. So, frequency of induced DMF is that is frequency of induced DMF. So, frequency of induced EMF in rotating machine is P delta n by 120 where delta n is where delta n is relative speed between field and winding. Since the winding is stationary, so you can say in case of synchronous machine the frequency of induced DMF directly depends upon the speed of rotation of the field or you can say speed of rotation of the rotor. Is it okay? So, the frequency of induced DMF in synchronous machine is equals to P n by 120 where n is the speed of rotation of rotor or I can say this to be delta n where delta n is the relative speed between field and winding. In synchronous machine winding is stationary and field is rotating. Okay? Now, see one question. A four pole, four pole synchronous 
मशीन रोटर is rotated at 1500 rpm then the frequency of induced emf on stator will be okay so we have a four pole synchronous machine and rotor is rotated at 1500 rpm then the frequency of induced emf on stator will be so you can say sir since the stator is stationary and rotor having dc field so it means the speed of the rotor is the speed of the field so if the speed of the rotor is the speed of the field so relative speed between field and winding is same as the speed of the rotor so frequency of induced gmf will become p into delta n by 120 or you can say sir delta n is the relative speed between field and winding which winding and which field you can say stator winding and rotor field rotor field is rotating at speed 1500 rpm so 4 into 1500 by 120 you can find that is equals to 50 hertz okay if the same machine is now rotated at 1800 rpm then what happened if the same machine is rotated at 1800 rpm then what happened if the machine is rotated at 1800 rpm then the frequency of supply will become 60 hertz that is why high frequency supply systems are said to be more powered is it okay because same amount of torque is being supplied at higher speed so torque into omega m is the power so high frequency supply system that is why said to be the more powered supply is it okay